welcome to Write Women Write, the site where we help you rev up your writing and get your book written. Today, it is my great pleasure to have with me Michelle Fogel, who I not only have read all of her books, but I actually know her in person. And she is a fabulous author and a writing coach and a coach for entrepreneurs. And uh, she's got a ton of information to share with us today about how to move from being just a regular mom to how to be a published author. Welcome, Michelle. Well, hello, and thank you for having me, Donna. It's lovely to be here. Very excited. All right. So, Michelle, can you start by telling us how it is that at age 40, you came to publish your first book? Well, um, I've been writing novels for a while. I started out um, doing my uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts when I was younger um, in creative writing. So I have a degree and then, um, and I, and then I abandoned it and I, I left it for a long time wanting to have children and have my other career um, in uh, business and communication. And, um, and then after I had my second kid, I just decided this, you know, I tried to bury this, but it's not working and I miss it. And I, and I feel like there's something missing in my life. So, um, you know, two kids, one, one toddler, one baby, I started writing again and um, it went slowly, but um, bit by bit, I've written a whole bunch of books and started to get them published. So yeah, it's been a journey, um, but um, it is doable and um, you don't necessarily have to sacrifice your sanity in order to do it. <laughs> and the books that you've written tend to follow on some specific themes. Can you tell us about the themes that you write about? Sure. Well, the first two books that I had published um, are both male-male um, romances. They're both um, gay romance. And um, it's, it's an area that, you know, in starting to write again, I, I started to follow my, my passions and my interests and, and read more and learn about what other people were writing. And um, it's, a, it's a whole genre that I didn't even know existed, um, being, you know, the elderly woman that I am, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> these young people, they have all these new things we don't know about. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I discovered this whole, um, this whole other subgenre in romance that I didn't even know was there. And I love it. And um, I, I started reading a whole bunch of books and, and realized, you know, I can write this. And prior to that, I had been writing science fiction. So um, with, I realized, romance plots. So um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's funny how you discover what genre you fit in sometimes after you write a bunch of books. <laughs> right, right. And, um, and then, yeah, so the first two books that are, that are out are both um, male, male romance, uh, which is, oddly enough, mostly written by women and mostly read by women. That is interesting. Wow. And then uh, my new book coming out is um, one of my older books, one of my science fiction books. So um, I'm going back to that as well. But there's definitely, very frequently, there's definitely romance themes and um, lots of love and romance and uh, hope and, um, and also lots of LGBT characters. Tell me about... Um that first, the, the, your third novel that you're going to have published, The Root of the Spark, mm -hmm. and uh, how, you know, the kind of the story behind that one, insofar as you wrote it a long time ago, and then you shelved it or stuck it under the bed, and now it's been brought back to life. Mm -hmm. It's an encouraging story for people who have got books stashed under their bed. That they're Yes, yeah, those books under the bed, don't throw them away, they're, they're little gold mines. Um, that one was very near and dear to my heart. I, you know, I really, I think, I feel like it's the best book I've written so far. Um, even though it's, it wasn't my first book that I wrote and it wasn't my, my most recent. So it's, it's, you know, it's in the middle of the under the bed. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a book that I really love and, um, I knew that I wanted it to find a good home. I knew I didn't want to self publish it. I just didn't have the energy for that. Um, but traditional publishing wise, um, it was a tough sell because um, it was a series. I knew that it was part of a series because I'd written, I'd, I have written another book in that series already. Um, 
and it was part of a series that wasn't all LGBT. So I, I didn't really fit in with some of the presses that are all LGBT only. Like for example, the, the publisher that I have for my first two books, they only do male, male romance. So it just didn't fit there. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to be in a narrow box um, that wouldn't allow me to, to publish the other books in the series, which um, there's a male and female romance in um, the previous book. So um, I knew that I needed a publisher that would, that would do romance, that would do erotic scenes, um, that would be open to LGBT characters, but not only LGBT mm -hmm. characters, and also would welcome science fiction. <laughs> So it was it was tricky. It was tricky to find uh, that type of publisher and I, I ended up finding it with um, Loose Id, which is uh, like an erotic uh, romance uh, publisher. So they've got a nice big opened um, welcome stage for lots of different things to happen. Really encouraging. The, the novel that I wrote is, I said, what you're describing is definitely a blended genre, particularly if you take the whole series into account. And mm -hmm. I know five years ago, people were saying, you know, blended genre is a kiss of death because even, even when I was submitting my, my manuscript to agents two years ago, they were saying, there's nowhere to put this on a bookshelf, right? It, it doesn't fit nicely in women's fiction. It doesn't fit exactly in paranormal, but it fits a little bit in both of those. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's nice to see that there are now openings for those stories that before might not have found homes. Well, and the very famous uh, agent, Donald Mass said recently at a conference, I think it was last year, he said that his prediction was that there would be the death of genre that um, we would all be starting to move towards uh, a much more open playing field where you wouldn't have to sell a romance book and it has to be only romance or you wouldn't have to sell a science fiction book and it's only science fiction that those you know that readers don't um, necessarily care about those lines it's the publishing industry that cares about those and, and it's their marketing machine that gets in the way of, of trying to interface between the stories and the readers and we don't actually need those those narrow slots. So let's hope. That's encouraging news, yeah. So you are a coach. How did you come to be a coach? Well, in my in my moving away from writing long ago, I um I ditched that <laughs> and I started to um work in the communications side of things um in business. And then from there, uh, when I had my kids, I decided to start my own company. And I, um, I do small business support consultations. So we end up helping people with websites or um, their social media presence or their, um, their brand identity for their company. Sometimes we're building uh, from the ground up. Sometimes we're doing a redesign um, or a rebrand or a new development in the company. Um, and we're basically helping them to take their, their big ideas of who they are and pull those down into into something that's tangible, shareable, um, great communication that they can then put out into the world and, and feel really well represented. So um, that is how I started out doing coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one, um, usually with each client mm -hmm. um, and we talk through um, their brand and what they're up to and what their dreams are and, and how to make those actually happen. So and, and some of those, some of those clients that you work with, those small businesses are actually authors. They're just, well, they're not just, but they are people who have written books and that, that book is their small business. Right. And sometimes it's a, it's a one facet of their business, you know, like, um, one of my clients has a thriving business and she also has written a book. So um, the book and the and the business tie together and um, and that they support each other. So I think that you know this idea that you, you know you have to become an author and only an author. That's not the way it works anymore. It's it can be a it can be a part of your life. It doesn't have to be the only thing in your life. Um, so in addition to the coaching, you also teach creative writing classes or courses. Yeah, I've struggled a lot with uh, creative process myself. So um, after, you know, years and years of wrestling with my 
my demons and my writer's block and all of those things, I felt passionate about wanting to gather all of the things that I, all the tricks and um, process that I'd cobbled together and put that all down into a course. So I created a course and I taught the course um, and um, I've taught a few workshops and, and um, various presentations and panels and things like that. Um, but um, I'd love to be able to put that course um, online, make it a lot more accessible. Um, so that's coming. Okay. Um, and um, I guess that I think the main takeaways that I wanted to share here um, from that course are um, the idea of empowerment and uh, also collage. And those things definitely go hand in hand in my mind. Um, so I think for me that the biggest roadblock is, uh, is always discouragement and that um, it's not time, it's not energy, um, because when you're, when you're empowered, you find the time and you find the energy. When you're discouraged, you don't and you can't. So it's, it's all of those kind of digging deep and figuring out where, where are the ways that you, you subtly undermine yourself and you, and you disempower yourself. Um, and maybe you feel like people around you are doing that and maybe they are. Um, but I think what it comes down to is no matter, no matter what's going on around you, what are you saying to yourself about writing? What are you saying to yourself about your work and your purpose and your value? And um, those are the, the deep, tricky questions that will, I think, make or break whether you're actually able to get yourself to sit down and do some work. Right. So at the very beginning of, of what you just said, you said it's about empowerment and collage. Mm -hmm. what, does, what does collage mean in this context? So collage for me um, became kind of a, uh, an empowerment point where um, I would look at the great you know, teachers, pick up a writing book and, and read their teachings and um, and I would try try to follow them and be like this isn't working I don't I this doesn't feel right to me I can't get myself to do these things um, I must not be a real writer I must not uh, actually be able to follow instructions and and you know uh, you know those the rules right the rule book you have to write every day in order to be a real writer and i'd be like oh no i'm not a real mother i'm not a real writer i'm just a mom and i can't write every day and you know so th those those would always be the disempowering things when i would find a piece of process give it a try and then be like well it's over you know and so i went on this roller coaster ride of like trying things on, but with this huge weight of um, guilt and, you know, heavy duty, heavy handedness, not realizing that what empowerment means is that you are the authority on what your creative process is mm. and that you can take little pieces from other people's process, from other people's work, from other people's ideas, and you can collage those together into your own process hey, you try this exercise, didn't work, throw it out the window. Don't even waste any time getting discouraged about that that didn't work for you. That's completely fine and normal. And um, I think that that was something that I missed in all my learning, you know, my, my degree and, and various courses that I've taken. Nobody was saying that. Nobody was saying you are in charge. You know yourself best. Um, go on this journey of figuring out what works for you with empowerment with agency, with authority over yourself. So that's definitely one of the things I want to share with people about their work. Wow. Because I think that if you're really wanting to write a book, you have this, this thing that we have, this you know, disease that you feel called to do this stuff and you don't really know why, but if you don't do it, it, it sucks. It really doesn't feel good. And you feel that, that lack, that loss in your life. And then when you try to do it, it's also tough because you've got to face the demons and you've got to um, push through the blocks and you've got to figure out, okay, well, why, why can't I get myself to sit down? I know that I want to do this, but something's in my way. What is in my way? And then figuring out your way around that. You've mentioned demons twice mm -hmm. and you don't write horror. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I think we all, I mean, especially women, and I, and I certainly can't speak for all women, but I, I can speak for my girlfriends. And I think they would, they would be happy to hear me say um, that we all face the, the female demons of guilt and um, worthiness. You know, so if we're, if we're giving and we're contributing in a physical way to, to children or to household or to finances, um, then we feel that we have value. Whereas uh, when you're doing creative work uh, and you're, you know, looking out a window, well, what are you doing? Um, living in some dream world, doing nothing. Um, and that those negative voices can be very, very harmful to creative work. Um, and I think they're very pervasive. And um, if you can give yourself, uh, if you can find a way around those um, negative critical voices and find a way to to unplug from that and make that demon into your guardian, mm. um, which is another thing that um, we can talk about more. And Perhaps is that the, the kind of thing that you teach in your course? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, because I think those, you know, those critical voices, when you really dig down into it, um, the critical voice is just trying to protect you. It's, you know, it's saying really horrible things to you, things that you would never say to another human being, hopefully. Um, things like, you know, you don't have anything to say. Nobody wants to hear what you're talking about. This isn't worth anything. Um, but the root of that, I think the beauty of that is I want to protect you from getting hurt. I want to protect you from feeling criticized by others. So I'm going to criticize you before they even get into the room. Right. And then you're going to be ready for any kind of attack. So it's a defensive mechanism and not that useful. Well, I was going to say, and where that can fail is that negative voice can then make you not even go into the room because it's too terrifying. So it just stops you right there. Yeah. Really destructive. For it's me. very destructive. It can be very destructive. But I think once you, once you can actually stop and hear it mm -hmm. and detach from it and look at it objectively and go, oh, I'm actually doing that to myself. Right. And whatever way it works for you to figure out how to do that, then, then you, can, you can start to actually engage with that voice and, and, and figure out um, what the good things are about that. And it, yeah, you know, self-protection is important and we all need it. So how do you want to do that in a, in a, conscious way instead of a subconscious way where it's det detracting from the things that you're trying to get done. Wow. And um, you're going to be contributing some more to the Right Woman, Right Community, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Um, and you're going to be launching your own courses coming up soon. And perhaps by the time, by the time someone's seeing this, your courses are already available. What's, what's, what's next for you as Michelle Fogel, the author and the author's coach? Hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to um, the new uh, coaching program with you guys. Um, I'm excited to, to talk with other authors and people who are aspiring authors um, to figure out help them through this kind of process. If there's, you know, roadblocks or um, writer's blocks that are in there, which I think we all have at some point um, through a writing career, that you're, you're not going to get away scot-free at some point. <laughs> you're going to have to hit a wall and pick yourself back up and figure out your way over it or around it or through it. So um, that's something that I, I feel I can speak to having <laughs> done it many times myself. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm uh, looking forward to the coaching with uh, Right Woman Right. Looking forward to the teaching coming up um, and looking forward to publishing more books and getting um, my author platform um, bigger and better. Okay. That sounds like an amazing next, what, few months or few years forward? <laughs> Hopefully the rest of my life, let's say. Um, anything else that you want to share before we sign off and that you get back to work? Um, I guess parting words. Um, if you're wanting to write a book, uh, you can. And you can write a lot of books. And you can do it a little tiny bit at a time. And you can build upon everything that you've done. And, um, 
and there are ways forward. And I think that the biggest, the biggest problem, the biggest um, thing that you're going to have to fight against is your own discouragement and um, finding all, any little ways that you can to encourage yourself, to empower yourself, to praise yourself, um, even though we're taught never to do that. Uh, it is a really good thing to do. And, um, and we'll be sharing more of all of these kinds of things as we move forward. Yay. Thank you, Michelle. That was a fabulous, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. I don't even know how long it was, but um, I'm leaving feeling more empowered just to go and do good work today after listening to you, which I always am. Good. To talk to you. So have a good day and okay. uh, we'll see you. Um, uh, I'll share some links to where else people can find you on the Right Woman Right website and then on your own websites and your Facebook page and your Amazon page so that people can track you down and uh, find out a little bit more about you. Cool. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.